Now on 10 meter, Matt Scoggin from the United States preparing to do what's listed as a forward one and a half somersault in tuck position. He's America's second best hope behind Greg Leganis. John, in the first four rounds of competition, the divers do easy dives. They demonstrate their basic skills in diving. These are the simple ones. This is a forward one and a half somersaults from 10 meter, 33 feet up. Now, you know, Phil, you mentioned earlier that this is where he's really going to have to hit all of. Anything better than a seven means a good dive. Watching the takeoff. Good jump. He's not as pretty or as smooth as Greg, but still a very high jump. And then the entry, the most important thing, the last thing the judges see. Straight in and no splash. Our next diver in the rotation is Jorge Mondragon from Mexico. He's going to be doing a forward flying one and a half somersault in Pike. And that flying it makes it a little bit more difficult. Well, it makes it a little bit more difficult, a little more interesting. It means the first half of rotation looks like a front dive, like a swan dive. He starts out in a swan dive and then bends over to finish the dive. Mondragon is 24 years old. He lives and trains in Mexico City. He's studying hotel management. And he's a veteran of international competition. He's an Olympic finalist, and he is also a very good diver. Forward flying, one and a half somersault pike position, 1.8 degree of difficulty. are even in degree of difficulty. Then they go into whatever they can do, the most difficult somersaulting and twisting dives. But in the beginning, some are a little bit harder, some are a little bit easier. But after four, they're even on that part. So the judges score seven and a half, couple of eights. The uh, high and the low will be thrown out. Watch on the takeoff. The first half of rotation is in a straight or layout position. Looks like a swan dive to start with. And then he bends over and finishes one and a half rotations. Very straight on the entry. A little bit of flat feet at the end. Judges take off a fraction for that. So he goes into the waiting room to mentally prepare for his next round. Fourth diver in the rotation, Jeff Hurst, our neighbor from the north in Canada. He's doing an inward one and a half somersault. Pike position. One of the six directions you can go off a tower, and that was a good dive also. We expect in the men's senior international competition in the beginning rounds to see nothing but good dives. We're just looking for those great ones, and that's what we build up to watching Greg Loganis at the end of the round. How do the judges tell the difference between a good and a great dive? You see the scores on... on All of the elements of diving, good scores here. All of the uh, elements, the approach, the takeoff, the explosive strength of dive in the air and here you see the dive in the air this part one and a half rotations very easy straight in on the entry and the ideal finish is absolutely no splash he has a little but still very straight in good dive so while he towels dry he watches his Canadian teammate forward one and a half somersault for David Bedard again another great entry not as high in the jump as you'll see some of the divers have but a great finish Consequently, in all, a good dive. Again, you'll see scores better than seven, seven and a half. David trains in Hudson Heights, Quebec. He's coached by Don Webb, five feet, seven inches high. So that's the fifth diver in rotation. Leganis is the seventh and final diver in rotation, so he's getting ready for his turn to do his dive. But first of all, we've got somebody else on the platform. And his coach has told me just moments before the competition started, he said, Greg is mentally ready as well as physically. But when he's mentally ready, look for the record. <laughs> Forward one and a half somersaults in pike position will be the dive for Jesus Mena from Mexico. Mexico has turned out a couple of uh, uh, Pan Am Games champions. 
and they've had some great divers over the year. What they're waiting for here is the scoreboard and the judges to be all set to tally the total for the next dive. It's all computerized. The judge is looking the other way when the diver dives. Nullifies the score just a bit. Again, simple dives in the beginning. You saw the front direction before you saw an inward direction. There's six possible ways you can go off the platform. And when we get to the optional rounds, rounds five through 10, those six rounds, they'll demonstrate all six directions you can go off a platform. So now the scores come in on the official tally board. Seven and a half, eights, and eight and a half. So 36 plus on that dive for Jesus. And now the man everyone's been waiting to see, Greg Luganis. Forward flying one and a half somersault, pike position. showing their appreciation. They're getting their money's worth today out of the diving tickets here at the Indiana University Natatorium. Judges scores eight and a half, two nines from the judges, 46 points on the dive, and that put him in comfortable first position. Watch the takeoff. This is the legend at work. Just powerful off the platform. So artistic and graceful. The entry tells it all, perfectly straight in with knife-like toes. And so Luganis could be our leader after the first round of diving. Let You're watching Greg Luganis preparing for his second round dive. He's getting ready. He's in, sec in second position after the first round. But in, as we say, Phil Boggs, in the early rounds, they're all doing relatively simple dives. Right now is the diver before him, Jesus Mania, and he's doing an inward one and a half somersault in pike position. This is the sixth diver in the rotation. Great entry. That's the entry they're looking for. Not the jump off the platform that Luganus has, not the ease with which he accomplishes his dives, but a great entry, and consequently will be very good scores. Of course, nines. Nines is a good score for this diver, for any diver for that matter, eight and a half and an eight, 89 points is the score at the end of the second round. Now all eyes turn to the 10-meter platform where Luganis is the final diver in the rotation. This is the conclusion of the second round of men's 10-meter platform diving. Greg will be attempting a back dive in pike position, degree of difficulty 1.8. but what you're watching is Leganis attempting to go for a triple-double. Three consecutive two gold medal performances. Nine and a half down the board. The high and the low will be tossed out. 95 is his total score. That does move him into the lead at watch, this point. Watch on the takeoff. He's several feet over the platform. Powerful jump. And touch right at the top. And just drop straight in the pool. A little less splash on the entry, and there would have been tens. So that concludes the second round of competition with Leganis, our leader. We'll be back with more competition from the men's 10-meter platform when we return after this. Welcome back to 10-meter platform diving. John Naper with Phil Boggs alongside. You see our leaders after two rounds of diving. The top American, Luganis, has a comfortable six-point lead. The second American, Matt Scoggin, is ready for his third round dive, a reverse dive in layout or straight position. He's in fifth place right now. This is the reverse direction where he'll dive back towards the platform. That's three in a row for Matt, too. 
Excellent dive. You can see his position in the air is not as graceful as Luganis, but deadly accurate. So Matt Scoggin should make some uh, progress up the leaderboard on the basis of that dive. We are still in the, what are called required dives, the easier dives. 7.5, 8.5, a couple of eights. So, so Matt Scoggin looks pretty good. Watch the jump off the platform. Great jump. He's very aggressive. Goes after the takeoff. And the position is just not as elegant, as graceful as Greg. Arms are a little bit out of position coming toward the entry, but perfectly straight in. Great finish. So there's still more diving to come, and we'll be back with that a little later. But first, let's go to Brent Musburger in the CBS Broadcast Center. Diving, you see the leaders after the second round of diving. Luganus followed by Jesus Mania, and in fact, he is getting ready to dive his third round. He's doing a reverse dive pike. It's the same dive Greg Luganus will do just following him. A little bit over rotation. Watch the difference when you see this, you remember this dive, and you watch Luganus's Difference in jump, difference in position, difference in dive in the air, what it looks like and difference in the entry. But why did he go over? Uh, he jumped a little bit away from the tower and took his feet and pulled them around with him and just over-rotated. So the judges' scores give him 37 points on that dive. Now let's compare it with the greatest diver in history, Greg Leganis, exact same dive. straight up and right straight in on the entry. Now, it's easy to say that Leganis was better than Minya before him, but how do you put numbers to the dive? How do you say that's a nine instead of an eight and a half? Well, there you see the nines <laughs> and a nine and a half. The way you do that is you compare on the jumps, you compare on the position in the air. Watch at the beginning. First thing you're going to look at is the jump. Who's higher? Greg is higher, and he's in a better position. A better touch. And watch on the lineup, the position in the air. It's like an arrow right here, perfectly lined up. And right straight in. A little bit of splash on the entry, so we got nines, not tens. So that concludes our third round of diving competition. Leganis remains our leader at this point. It seems like a lot of the divers like to put those earphones on and somewhat withdraw from the competition after they're through. Well, they try and divorce themselves both from the crowd and the other divers so they can concentrate on their own dive. Kenneth Vincent's from Puerto Rico. And that's still one of the easy dives. That was one and one half somersaults with one twist. Later on, you'll see the divers do three and a half twists in rotation. So the going is just getting rough now. Matt Scoggin is the next diver up on the platform for the United States. Scoggin will be doing a backward one and a half. But after three rounds, Matt Scoggin has now moved into medal contention. He's popped up to third place. Mania dropped out of the top three. Jeff Hurst from Canada, who was our leader after the first round, is now in second place. Backward one and a half somersault with a half twist. This is the last round of the easy dives. It's the fourth round of competition, and this is still an easy dive. what it looked like in the air. A little bit sloppy, a little bit flat feet, not crisp, defined positions. 
it's hard to quantify that in terms of numbers, but you can certainly, in comparison with the likes of Leganis, see the difference. Seven and a half eights from the judges. 180 is his total score after this round. Again, we're being picky, and we're looking at the best divers in the world. Greg, of course, is the number one diver in the world, but the United States is also the number one team in the world. You see just a simple one-half twist and one and one-half somersault starting backwards. Right here on the entry position, straight in, very little splash. Great. And so we'll be back with more diving from the natatorium after this message and a word from your local station. We're back at the natatorium. The scoring after three rounds of diving. Luganis is the top American, 146. Matt Scoggin is in the bronze position, and the Canadian Jeff Hurst is standing in between. Getting ready for his teammate, Dave Bedard, from Canada to do his fourth round dive. Jeff Hurst has just now entered the water, getting the scores from the judges. Now Dave Bedard will begin getting ready now to do a backward one and a half somersault with one half twist. good dive John you know for four rounds in a row we've seen just one good dive after another these are all very good divers competitive at any level consistency is the key Dave Bedard completing now his fourth round of diving scores from the judges seven and a half sevens seven and a half and eights remember anything better than a seven in diving is a good score Craig Leganis, the count is about ready to begin. He's our leader after three dives. He's getting ready for an inward one and a half somersault. And Ron O'Brien, head coach for the U.S. team in the Mission Bay Aquatic Center down in Florida, is also watching. What could be a 10 here, John? Could he also be on the way to a new world record in platform points? Well, we have to wait and see how the contest develops. That's the end of the easy rounds. We get into the more difficult somersaulting and twisting dives. Then we'll know how really prepared he is. It's a difficult task indeed to live up to the reputation of being Greg Leganis. But right now he gets nine, nine and a half from the judges. 200 points after the four easy rounds. And still the four high scoring dives still to remain. We'll have more of diving as we come back later. But after the four easy rounds, Luganis on top. Matt Scoggin moved up to the second place position after the first four rounds. Luganis, the man to beat, is back on top. He's on the 10th meter platform getting ready for his fifth dive, the first of the difficult dives in the, com in the competition. This is an arm stand, cut through, reverse one and one half somersaults. What that means is you're 33 feet up on top of the 10 meter and you stand on your hands and then fall forward and somersault back towards the platform. That other gentleman up on the platform is up there to ensure that he does a proper handstand. If not, then they automatically take off points away from the score. What makes Leganis so difficult is his degree of difficulties, 2.6, are hard to beat. He can get eights and still outscore dives of tens in lower degrees, and Leganis is known to hit a few tens himself. Otherwise, a great dive. So what's that, about an eight and a half, if you were judging that? Well, that's his coach, Ron O'Brien, looking to the scoreboard. He's coaching him right now. You can see the hand positions. He's telling him what he is. 
So the judges do give eight, seven, seven and a half. The high and the lower thrown out, the middle five are multiplied by 60% to get the average of the middle three. That's multiplied by the degree of difficulty. Great takeoff, perfect control in the handstand. Right here, it looks great. Little collapse in the back position, a lot of splash. So that concludes the fifth round of diving for Luganus. But earlier in this round, Matt Scoggin, who was in second coming in, was a little bit lackluster in his arm stand dive. Did the exact same dive, but watch the difference in the entry. He just lets go way too soon, doesn't complete the rotation. He's halfway on his back, four and a halves and fives. Standings after seven, Greg Luganis, 423 with a 30-point lead over Jesus Mena from Mexico. Dave Bedard is in third. We're now in the eighth of 10 rounds. So this is his third to last dive. He'll be doing a forward three and a half somersaults in pike position, degree of difficulty, 3.0. And this is where Greg Luganis typically faults into the lead. He's way ahead already, and he's doing the most difficult somersaulting and twisting optionals done in competition. Crowd's been very supportive here at Indianapolis. They've seen him dive well in the past. This is also the headquarters city for the sport of diving. Nine and a half, a lot of nines from the judges. He just broke the 500 point barrier with two dives remaining. So Greg Luganis, who also holds the Pan American record and the world record in this event, is well on his way. And pleased with that performance, watch the takeoff. This is three and one half somersaults from 33 feet up in the air. He's got one and a half somersaults done above the platform. They like jumping off the ground with no spring in it. That's cement. Rotates three and a half times, and he's just deadly accurate, right straight in. So that score will vault him into more of a lead. He now has some 65 points of a lead at this point over Matt Scoggin of the United States, who's back into second place in medal contention. Well, he had two choices. He had a quarter or straight in. So I had to pick the second one. Yeah, he was just real late up here. Yeah, yeah, I thought that as soon as I went off, I didn't think he was He got down great there. And swing high all the way over the top and surfacing you take tuck and flat. And no matter how good the dive is, coach comes in and says, you could make it better. Always immediate feedback, an essential part of this sport. So as Luganis begins to concentrate on his ninth round, let's take a look at the scores after eight. Luganis, our leader, Matt Scoggin of the United States in silver medal contention, Jesus Menya is in third right now, but Scoggin is preparing for his next round dive. His ninth round will be an inward three and a half somersault in tuck position, 3.2 degree of difficulty. Now Matt faltered early in the competition, but he's certainly come on late. Same thing he did in the U.S. Nationals. The crowd very supportive. This man who turns 24 years old tomorrow local favorite and he has beaten Luganis in the past perhaps not today but not looking likely today but this is where he's excelled in the competition near the end with the most difficult dives it's an inward three and a half somersaults is the most difficult dive done in this direction off the platform so far. The crowd eagerly waiting the judges' scores. They hope to see one or two tens. And perhaps that's a little low for some of the spectators. Eight and a half and nines they feel is a little bit lower than perhaps he should have deserved. But that will keep him solidly in second place. Watch on the takeoff. This is an inward three and one half somersaults. You need to be a little bit close to the platform just to make it. You can see head just clears the platform but two rotations at platform level feet came apart a little bit right there 
but perfectly straight in on the entry. Just pulls it around underwater. So Matt Scoggin can towel himself down while he's awaiting his next dive on the final dive of the competition for him. We'll be back with more after we break for this brief word. Braden, indeed, Luganis is closing in on the gold medal. He's got two dives remaining. He's in a comfortable lead. He's at the end of the rotation of the ninth round. So Luganis is preparing for a backward three-and-a-half somersault tuck position. He has two dives remaining. They're his two most difficult dives in the list, the most difficult optional dive, somersaulting dive that can be done from either of the directions. First one he chooses is the back three-and-one-half somersault. Twenty-seven years of age, gold medalist twice at the Los Angeles Olympics, silver medalist in the games you won the gold medal, Phil Box. Craig Luganis has been around for a long time, and he's doing very, very well. One dive remaining and a big lead. So we conclude the ninth round of diving here at the men's 10-meter platform, and there you have it. The first tens from the judges. Why, John? Watch the takeoff. Three and a half somersaults backwards. Easily two somersaults at platform level. He finishes three and a half. It's a perfect entry. Straight in, and he takes the splash right under with him. So with one dive remaining, there's your leader, Greg Lug Luganis, our winner with a new Pan Am record, 694 points. Matt Scoggin from the United States snuck in for the silver, and Dave Bedard was the bronze. The final dive for Luganis, a reverse three-and-a-half somersault in tuck position. John, this is the most difficult dive being done in competition today off the platform. And Greg saved his toughest and best for last. more than enough to win the gold medal for Greg Luganis. He received one perfect 10 from the judges on that. And that final score again, a new Pan Am record, breaking his own record by 17 points. And with the gold and the silver medalists, both from the United States, down on pool deck, Phil Boggs. Greg, congratulations. The first time a triple-double. Gold medals in springboard and platform, three Pan Ams in a row, and another record. But we've come to expect that. What did you expect? <laughs> Well, I, I was glad that I had a good performance. I felt good. I felt strong. I felt real steady. I felt like I dove smart. Um, I, some things that I, were, I was really proud of and other things I feel that could I need to work on. Well, you had a tough year, but does this cap the year the right way? Definitely. This is icing on the cake. It's great. And our silver medalist, Matt Scoggin. Matt, again, chasing Lou Gaines and the legend and the record. But how about your performance today? I felt good about my last four or five dives. I came back to get the silver medal. My fifth optional, my, my first optional, my cut through, I miss it again. It's becoming a habit, but I'm going to try and stop that and get it ready for the 88 trials. What about chasing Greg? Uh, I'm not after Greg. I'm just after doing my best performance and trying to do all 10 dives and try and win. Great performance anyway. Congratulations, both of you. John Neighbor.